nervous systems. Chapter 48 in the Campbells. Um, we're going to take this in two parts. This first one is part A. Uh, just an overview. Uh, it's kind of the command and control center of organisms. The human body contains uh, 100 million nerve cells, neurons approximately. And the key here is that every neuron can communicate with thousands of others, not just one. Um, a couple of things about other organisms. Most nervous systems consist of uh, neurons in some kind of circuit and then supporting cells, things that hold them together. And then uh, what distinguishes most animals groups is how they're organized into circuits. We'll just take a look at this quickly a second. We have simple animals that have things called nerve nets, like cnidarians, and then more complex antikinoderms, the starfish. Um, we have uh, systems of nerves that don't have any centralized uh, thing. And then we start to get with flatworms and an annelids, where we have actually some kind of central, centralized uh, brain to control the rest of the body. Move into insects again, brains and mollusks. Uh, you also see localized, uh, localized groups of nerves called ganglia. Humans have ganglia too, uh, which are sort of like uh, groups of nerves that interneurons that perform functions. Okay, and again, as we get more complicated salamanders and squids, more of a centralized brain. Okay, how almost how all nerve systems work is sensory integration and motor output. So we have sensory input of some kind, okay, from the organism to a brain, spinal cord, or ganglia. There's integration, so decide what to do, and then output from the brain called motor. So we have sensory, integrative, and motor sections of nerve nervous systems. Uh, an example of that is in the uh, knee-jerk reflex. Hit here with a reflex hammer. Uh, there's a sensory nerve, sends a message, goes to the spinal cord. There's an integrative neuron there that reads that and sends a message on the motor neuron out to contract the quadriceps. Okay, that's a spinal reflex, it's called. So, a neuron. Neurons have a specific, and you're going to have to memorize this later, but uh, a neuron, a nerve cell, in general, looks like this. Okay? With a cell body with containing all of the organelles, dendrites, which would be where it senses a stimulus. The axon, where the message is brought down, usually a long strand. And then at the end of each nerve is a space called the synapse, where uh, it communicates the message with the next nerve. Okay? The general overall shape of a nerve and all the parts, you'll have to know those too. Okay, so how does a message get down a nerve? How does a nerve transmit a message? Well, the first concept you need to understand is the concept of resting potential. Resting potential. That every cell has a voltage across its membrane. So if we have a membrane here that the inside of a cell is negatively charged in, uh, relative to the outside of its cell. And we call that Okay, that sets up potential energy because positives and negatives would like to be together, opposites attract. So if we have positive ions outside the cell and negative ions inside the cell, we have potential energy. That's what the word membrane potential or resting potential. So when my nerve cells are not doing anything, if this is a nerve axon here, there's energy, there's potential energy 
in the resting potential. I'll take a look at this in a little more detail here. Okay, so resting potential is the membrane potential of a neuron that's not transmitting signals. And it depends on ionic gradients. Okay, ionic gradients. So here's an example of that. Okay, the cytosol would be the cytoplasm. Okay, there's sodium ions inside and sodium ions outside, but many more sodium ions outside. That gives an overall positive charge out here. And it's sodium, potassium, and chlorine. And this are proteins, amino acids, that make it negatively charged. And so uh, there's an overall positive charge outside and overall negative charge on the inside. And here is shown too. Now, the thing you need to understand about this, and we're going to talk, is that there are channels through the cell membrane, right? In the proteins. And so you would think that then that these positive ions would want to diffuse out and negative, and I'm sorry, or positive ions would want to diffuse in, and they will except it's selectively permeable, so not as many positive ions can diffuse in as can diffuse out. That's a big idea. So that now we have a potential energy across the membrane. Okay, the next big idea you need to understand about this is the idea of gated ion channels. That some of those channels in the cell membrane are gated. And I'm going to show this with a little red gate across it. Okay, and they can, and what that means is they will let a sodium ion in if the gate is open. Well, what makes it open? Well, you can stretch it and it'll open. It could open or close when a specific chemical binds. Okay, so if a chemical in there, like a receptor, it has a receptor on it that makes it open, kind of like pushing the button to make the door open in the handicap door in the school could be voltage gated that is if this if the membrane potential changes to negative here and positive here then that will open so action potential then is the name for the signal conducted by an axon if a cell has gated ion channels its membrane potential may change in response to stimuli something that opens those channels or closes them some stimuli change the membrane potential. And you'll see the word hyperpolarization and depolarization. Okay? If you get a stimulus, this is measured with a voltmeter. Notice that the membrane potential changed from negative to positive. What happened? Those positive ions went in creating a negative out here and a positive in here. That changes the reading on a voltmeter. So depolarizations are usually graded only up to a certain membrane voltage called the threshold. You need a stimulus. Stimulus strong enough to produce depolarization that reaches the threshold, triggers action potential. We're going to come back to all this in a little bit. So an action potential is a brief all or none depolarization of a neuron's membrane. So essentially, here's what you get. This is a nerve cell. Okay, here's a nerve cell. All of these little, it's all positive ions outside and negative ions inside. Stimulus. Something triggers off the nerve. It could be in your finger, it could be pressure. In your eye, it could be light. In your nose, it could be a chemical. Changes the voltage that pressure or chemical makes this, opens a channel, makes the positive ion go in. When that happens, that changes the potential of the membrane. Along here are voltage-gated channels that then flop open. So this channel opens and that one goes in. So this channel opens and that one goes in. So this channel opens and that one goes in. And you get this domino effect 
of, of ions going in all the way down the nerve. So voltage-gated channels are involved in producing an action potential. When a stimulus depolarizes, as I just said, sodium channels open. We're going to look at this in a couple ways in class. Okay, so this illustration isn't that great, but the idea is that these channels, this is showing a gated channel, okay, allow sodium go to go in. Here they're closed, okay, called these gates on the top. When you get this change in energy, sodium ions go in. This sodium ion can go in, this one can't yet. Now this channel flips open and this sodium ion can go in. Now this channel closes, so the sodium can't go back in, and you get this wave down the axon. Okay, here's another view of the same thing, and we're going to take a look at this in class too. Okay, of negative ions going in, and it goes down the axon. Okay, you get this wave down the axon, obviously very fast. So the speed increases with the diameter of the axon. So the bigger the axon, the faster it'll go, which seems to make sense. Okay, in vertebrates, axons are myelinated. We'll come back to this idea in a second, which increases the speed of the action potential. Because what happens is, is the action potentials in myelinated axons jump between what are called the nodes of Ranvier. So on an axon in you, let's say one going up your leg, you have these kind of um, insulating things that an ion goes in and it jumps to this one. It doesn't go in a domino effect where all these have to go to. It goes from here to 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 here very fast, 200 meters a second or so down the axon. So, what happens when it gets to the end? Well, in the end of a cell, at the end of a nerve cell, I'm going to draw the nerve cell as a string right now, and here's the next nerve cell. There's actually a gap. That gap is called the synapse. Okay? Synapse singular. There's a gap between the end of this nerve cell and the beginning of the next one. In most synapses, a presynaptic neuron, the neuron on this side of the synapse, sends a chemical signal across the gap. That chemical signal uses something called a neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter is a chemical that is, jumps across the gap. Okay, so when an action potential reaches a terminal, that's the end. The final result is the release of a neurotransmitter into the space. Synaptic cleft is the space from this nerve to the next nerve. Release it across there. Here's another illustration. Here's the voltage-gated channel. Okay, the message has just come down here. Tells the... There's vesicles in here with chemical. Those chemicals are released across the gap, opening channels in the next nerve. And when you open channels in the next nerve, that starts a stimulus. That's a stimulus to send the message down this nerve, jump the gap, down that one. Now there's a big discussion of neurotransmitters here. You're not going to have to memorize them. But you need to know that neurotransmitters have different effects. So, for example, there are four basic kinds of neurotransmitters. There are uh, acetylcholine is one in muscles, okay? Excitatory to vertebrate skeletal muscles. In other words, what that neurotransmitter is what makes your muscles contract when you get a message from the brain. Okay, notice that you see the word in here, inhibitory. Right here on this table, 48.1. Inhibitory means that when the nerve sends a message, it doesn't keep the message going in the next one. Okay? 
So uh, here are a couple of neurotransmitters in the brain. Dopamine, we, you may remember if we took anatomy. Okay? Dopamine is the one that makes you is uh, the one that makes you think something's good, if you will. You get that secreted when something is pleasurable to you, like a piece of carrot cake. <laughs> okay, so you have a piece of carrot cake and you get a shot of dopamine in your brain. Okay? It's excitatory generally, but in some places it's inhibitory. Serotonin is the calming one. It's inhibitory. Okay, and uh, here's another one, GABA. That's an inhibitory in the CNS, which is in the brain. Okay, so here's a, just a list of different kinds of neurotransmitters. And that, um, and so then there's a couple discussion slides about acetylcholine and others that we're not going to go into great detail. So that's our discussion of an introduction to how nerves send messages, introduction to the nervous system.